how come the stars stay in the sky and the moon travels around the earth as yeah. When Daddy gets home, he knows all that. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Dad. Yeah. They need to spend one-on-one -on -one time with their kids. I think that is so important because, I mean, they're always, they're usually the breadwinners in the family and a lot of times they get caught up. I mean, it's busy, they're gone all day and, you know, the kids could be in bed when they get home. But Saturday or whatever, a few hours here and there, just one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. I think that is so important. Uh, the fathers have put up with a lot of whining and complaining from us about it, but the secret is, is that we've enjoyed every second of it and would not trade it for anything. Mm. To, see my, to see my kids with their father and stuff, and I just love it. And I just encourage fathers, especially at such a young age mm -hmm. where you don't think they're in need as much when really they so they are. Do. They are, and especially now, because my kids look up to their dad like so much and, mm -hmm. and just what he does and they, they want to do the same thing and they just get so excited and yeah, just yeah. take that time. My youngest daughter, she was dating someone who I didn't approve of and I've always been one who believes strongly in just laying it before the Lord. I have since they were little girls. And she was dating a guy who I didn't agree upon at all. And I kept asking God, please dissolve this relationship. I want this relationship gone. He doesn't belong in our family. He's not who I prayed for all her young years. This is not the man that I thought my daughter would ever fall in love with. Driving to work one day, and lo and behold, I'm praying this prayer again. And God in an audible voice, like I'm speaking to each of you here, says, Eleanor, you have got to quit praying for this to be solved and pray for this man to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. Right then and there, I decided I am going to start praying for his salvation. Well, I'll tell you, this man is now my daughter's husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> this man is a wonderful, wonderful man. He treats my daughter with utmost respect. He's an amazing father. And he became a Christian about six weeks before they got married. And when he became a Christian, he said to my daughter, they were both not living for the Lord at the time, said, now what are you going to do with your life? She says, I want what you have. So that day, the two of them became um, one with the Lord, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Talk That's to God, mm -hmm. lay it before the Lord, and it's amazing what will come up. Mm -hmm. The answer will just blow you away. It sure did me. And for myself too, um, there's so much pressure to think, oh, I need an hour a day to get into really mm -hmm. devoted devotions. And, you know, even if it's a verse or, you know, talking to a Christian friend, encouraging each other, um, you know, Bible study when you can, care, um, church when you can, just picking up, teaching your son or daughter a, a verse, you know, whatever it is, just having God within your whole day, not necessarily, I mean, it's great when you can have that quiet time with the Lord, but not giving up because you're not getting that. We had just done all our landscaping and had been presented with this absolutely spectacular hanging basket for my mother for Mother's Day. Wake up Mother's Day morning, everything is gone. There's not a basket, there's not a plant, there's not a rose bush, there's nothing in my garden. Our whole neighborhood had been oh, vandalized. Oh. So Deanna sees the sadness on my face and she goes, Mommy, you just gotta pray. Oh. Believe God will bring it back. Oh. And I'm thinking, okay, God, this is in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Went to church, came home, our plants were on our front steps. Wow. You talk about childlike faith. Yeah. I learned that moment. Yeah. I have got to start trusting God. my prayers, like my child, I have taught my child to trust God. Mm -hmm. Then I better start living that myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sing, we sing a lot of songs at home. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, he's really That's great. Yeah, he picks up he picks them up really really quickly. So what's his favorite song? Oh, uh, probably Amazing Grace. Amazing awesome. Grace. He really? sings it everywhere. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of singing at church one day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to give your kids so much stuff, and and we learn. You know, you buy them toys, you buy them gifts, you buy them you know stuff. But really, all they want is you. They want mm -hmm. your attention. Right. All they want is you. Mm -hmm. And that was that was huge for me to learn. I've learned that now as I have a grandson, right? They just want your time, and, and they just want to see you. From experience, time flies by awfully quick. Mm -hmm. Whether good or bad, treasure every moment you have, because you don't know how long that moment's going to last. Mm -hmm. I look at my girls, and I look at the pictures on my wall when they were little girls, and I cannot believe the time is gone. 
And then I look at my pictures of my granddaughters, and I can't believe that they are now the children of my babies. Mm -hmm. It's a blink of an eye. Treasure every moment. They ask you to go out for a walk for them. Go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Your dishes can wait. Mm -hmm. If somebody calls, you know, can you um, can your child come over to my house and play with my child? Drop whatever you're doing. Allow your child that privilege. Mm -hmm. it's, it's huge. Mm 